Well, we see quite a lot of ludicrous cases in our line of work, I'm, I'm afraid to say, and we've dealt with nearly a thousand cases uh, in the two years that we've been running for. Uh, in this case, Sam hasn't said anything offensive or outrageous or anything that would upset anybody. All he said is that he wants to stand up for and show support for academics, uh, usually but not exclusively female academics, who have been bullied out of their jobs or faced harassment, uh, or in some cases even we're aware of death threats, um, for their views on the trans issue. Now, we think people on all sides of this debate should be able to express their views without, uh, without encountering that kind of uh, response. Um, and Sam agrees. He wants to set up a free speech society so that people can uh, speak their minds and have these discussions openly. Um, he wanted to set up this society to do that. And the Student Association for the Student Union uh, have blocked his efforts at every turn. So we've been helping him appeal that decision uh, and we'll be taking further action as well to help him. Mm, and this all started when he basically said he supported a, a, a professor who had been forced to resign because she had set up this network, this research network called the Gender Critical Research Network. Uh, and then she was criticised for that. So what kind of ideas was she actually discussing that forced her to, to resign? Well, it's all part of the broader debate we're seeing across society uh, where feminists and I, I think many others now as well are raising concerns about uh, women's spaces and issues like that. Now, as I said, we don't take a, a corporate position on that debate, but we do think that people on all sides should be able to express their views openly. And quite clearly, that's not happening at the moment, because if you do talk about concerns about uh, women's spaces, women's prisons, hospitals, and changing rooms and so on, um, you will face a, a pretty horrible backlash. Uh, we've seen too many people forced out of their jobs uh, or put in a position where they just can't continue in their workplaces and where uh, universities and employers are not willing to support staff who, who speak out and object. Um, so we're helping individuals like Sam who are, are just trying to create spaces where these, these discussions can happen. Um, but it's quite clear we need a much broader cultural change. I think our whole um, societal approach to free speech has gone horribly wrong in the last 10 years. Um, particularly, I think we need to see uh, young people approaching free speech as something that protects them, that protects everybody, that isn't just for certain groups of people. Uh, it is a fundamental human right and it isn't negotiable. Um, and I think that needs to be affirmed much more strongly across our education system. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think there's a sad fact, though, at the moment, isn't there, which is that it's actually a lot of young people doing a lot of the counselling. You know, it's, uh, and that's, that's a real issue because, you know, by definition, if that gets any worse, they'll, they'll bring that through with them for their lives and goodness only knows what, uh, what little council culture kids they will end up having. But uh, you know, how do we get that cultural change? Because, like I've said, it is a lot of people in their early 20s, in their teens at school, who seem to be the ones counselling everyone. It is, but what's so inspiring about Sam's case is here we have a young undergraduate who is defending free speech, defending the right of people to disagree with each other in a reasonable way. So although I think the picture on the whole uh, is not great at the moment, I think there are signs to be optimistic. I think there are people, including young people and students now, um, the Free Speech Champions programme, for instance, there are people fighting back uh, against council culture. And I think there are an increasing number of young people who don't like coming to an institution which tells them you can't talk about this or this or that, and you must think these things, and if you don't, you're not going to have any friends and you're going to be in a lot of trouble with your university. So I think we, we are starting to see a pushback against that, and I hope that, I hope that grows. The key thing that's happening at the moment is the Higher Education Freedom of Speech Bill. Uh, that's a piece of legislation that the Free Speech Union campaigned for. We'll be very pleased when that's on the statute books. Um, but as I said, we do need a, a broader cultural change as well. The law will be, will be extremely helpful. Uh, it's a critical piece of legislation, but we do need a broader cultural change, and that is going to take a long time to achieve. Um, and I think by helping people like Sam, the Free Speech Union, um, is at the head of making that change happen. Um, and we need to keep on helping people like Sam and many others.